<laughs> awesome. So everyone can see my screen? Yep. Yes. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Let's get into it. Um, so yeah, I'm Jamie. I work at Graph CMS. We are a headless CMS and we federate a bunch of services, make them available through the API and whatnot. Um, check that out. I'm not here to kind of pitch that and talk about that. I just think if you, you know, if you're interested in that, um, it kind of makes sense that I mention it and that I work there and we're talking about Jamstack. So today I will be talking about drop shipping on the Jamstack and what that looks like, what that means. Um, and why you might even do it. So, um, you know, this talk is obviously for for Jamstackers, um, and it's going to be covering drop shipping. Drop shipping, what is it? Well, very basically, um, it's this idea of having kind of no physical stock and uh, no no inventory to kind of hold and manage uh, and pay for up front. Um, it's something which you can, if you search on YouTube, like here, I just did a quick search, and it's something which you can kind of get started with re relatively quickly. And there is tons of ways to go about doing this. You can um, buy products um, through kind of drop shipping providers online that give you inventory that you can kind of sell on. You can do that within your own Shopify store, with your own Amazon store. Uh, so much can be kind of done there. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what it is. Um, I'm going to talk about it a bit more in detail as I go through the talk, obviously. Um, I've just kind of got a few slides here to to go over. Um, so yeah, the drop shipping is something which we'll, we'll go into. Um, why will why the Jamstack? Um, I started uh, last year looking for a way to sell products online, pretty much a, a swag store, some merchandise with the company logo on and some drones that a friend had created, and we kind of looked looked how can we sell these without kind of spending too much money uh, up front because this thing might not work. Um, so we started to kind of look around and some of the kind of requirements we, we had around inventory were, okay, um, we want something that we can just kind of print and, and, and kind of dispatch on demand. Um, something that kind of is supported with uh, worldwide um, and tons of different products, everything from a, um, a phone case to a um, even a, a laptop case. Um, to T-shirts, to hoodies, to um, backpacks and, and pins and badges, stickers and, and everything. And also we wanted something that was kind of, uh, it, it was good for the environment as well. So we settled on a, a company called Printful. Um, the, they are very good for the environment. They, they, they write a, a ton about this and they have all of the other kind of requirements uh, as well. Um, other things that we were kind of looking for when building this and kind of thinking, what do we do? How do we approach this idea of, of selling products? We were actually looking for um, something which would just take care of the uh, cart and checkout for us. Um, I have built those manually um, by hand in the past. Um, I didn't kind of want to burden myself with having to kind of do that and manage that and maintain it. So we kind of looked around for uh, a provider that would give us the ability to just embed a cart and checkout that supported uh, international payments um, and allowed customers to kind of repeat their orders as well by logging in and, and seeing a history. So we settled on using uh, Snipcart, which I'll, I'll show uh, in, in a second. Uh, and that kind of allowed us to plug in so many different payment gateways and, and, and third-party things, which, I'll, which obviously I'll, I'll go through in, in the talk as well. So the stack requirements, um, I'm familiar with uh, Next.js. Um, I wanted to kind of continue using Tailwind, React, obviously, with Next. Um, and we, we were going to deploy this to Vercel. Uh, we had a domain there, and we were quite familiar with the CI CD process. So it kind of all made sense. Um, you know, we wanted somewhere to put this that kind of just integrated with all the tools we had, and everything was well documented. Um, and when I started to build this, I didn't really, I didn't really have this idea um, that we would kind of open source it. It would just be something we created um for a one kind of a one-time use but i thought maybe some others you know other people can benefit from this and and certainly at the beginning um of last year there was a lot of people either out of work or kind of looking at new ways to to raise income and this kind of seemed like a good a good fit and it's probably aimed this the the starter which i'm going to kind of go through the code became and kind of open sourced is something which um 
would appeal more to agencies or freelancers that's building sites on the behalf of others. And this kind of just gives you the starting point to kind of get going with all of that. The design's very minimal. That's the, that was the idea. And it kind of just gives you the, the boilerplate to, to get going. So how does it work? Well, that's what we're going to kind of dive into now. Uh, essentially, just to kind of uh, give you an overview, we have inventory and printful. Customers add that on the site, on the React site, and then they check out with Snipcart. Snipcart will then trigger webhooks with Printful, uh, and then from Stripe, that an order has payments been taken. And then once that happens, Snip, uh, Printful will begin to kind of build the order. So only will Printful start to actually work on the order once the um, once that kind of webhook's been triggered from Snipcart. So um, that all happens, and then the customer's notified. They get emails and um, and, and whatnot from from other people. So. If you are interested in obviously checking all of that out, I have a, a website, a landing page that kind of just goes over this whole thing. You can get all of the code on GitHub, it's open source. Uh, and this landing page just kind of shows some of the features uh, of, of, of the product really. Um, so it's built with TypeScript. Um, you know, it, it, it allows you to kind of do some fancy things like recover an abandoned cart with, uh, with Snipcart. Fulfillment's completely automatic as well. So once somebody does pay for something on your site, it, it, it's on its way pretty much. Like give it a few days, it's then um, processed and handled. Um, and I'll kind of talk about a bit, a bit around the prices and, and some of the tax and VAT support. Um, but yeah, a lot of the information's on the website here. If you're curious, some FAQs on, on kind of how it works and if you need to support that and stuff, that is is kind of covered um, on here as well. So at headlessdropshipping.com. Now let's dive into the demo and kind of just take a look um, at this. Like I say, it's very basic. The idea was just to provide an initial landing page for all of our products. And if you wanted to, you could go and create additional um, pages for each of these, but um, we just kind of started out creating uh, kind of an index of all of the inventory um, on this page here. So everything that you see here, the product, and if I switch these, you'll see I've got some different variants. These change. All of these images are um, generated from a logo I've uploaded to my Printful account, and I've set all of the different products that are available within my store. So all I have to do is kind of plug in my Printful API keys, this page will automatically pull all of those products, list them in the grid, show all of the different prices and all of the different variants of those as well. So why don't we just pick something here and we'll add that to the cart. And you'll see here this cart's popped out. This is snip cart and we can adjust quantities and that takes care of all of that. We'll, we'll close that out there. There's a few other kind of little things um, that don't really matter too much, but we've got like a, a wish list thing that you can you can add things to really just to kind of show that you know this is more of a real world application. Um, some kind of static pages as well that you can kind of adopt, uh, kind of uh, take on um, to get going. There's a button to obviously log in, view your previous orders if you've already placed an order before, and at any time you can kind of open um, the cart. So what I'm going to do is maybe we'll pick um, uh, a few other products here. Um, maybe this as well. We've got a, a mug there. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the landing page. Like I say, it's built with Next.js, statically built, and all of the content here, all of the prices, images, all of these are automatically kind of built and generated on um, from Printful on demand. So again, just a quick rundown of Snipcart as well that I mentioned. This is something which... Um, like I say, embeds a car checkout, gives you all of all of that functionality. Go read about that if you're interested and want to learn more about that. Um, that's kind of what's powering um, this cart here. And it's not just the cart. Obviously, it's the, the checkout as well. So let me, um, let me just add my name in here and we'll go through the process. I'll just add my email and we'll um, add a phone number there. And... Annoying. I'm gonna fill that. Okay. Um, so there we go. Um, I've chosen uh, chosen a, a, an address out of my my info there. I'll just remove the space for just in case that throws an error at some point. Um, but yeah, you see here we get kind of dynamic rates back from our shipping. So um, you'll see here I've got a flat rate. 
This is automatically calculated through um, a webhook. So when I enter my address, that is then sending a notification to Snipcart, which then triggers my next application to say, okay, this is the address this person has. Um, and then that kind of talks to Printful to figure out, okay, what options do they have for um, for uh, shipping this? You know, what, what, what options are? So there's a flat rate in there. Maybe if we remove the cap, we might get different options. I don't know. Um, still, still the same, but it, it, it really depends on where you're located. You could get kind of next day delivery if you're kind of closer to that fulfillment center and you can choose uh, the products there. Again, we can continue to, to, to pay for this now. And I've not coded any of this. All of this checkout is kind of taken care of for me. Um, like I say, I've built tons of these in the past manually. I used to work for an e-commerce API, but I just like that we can just drop something in and I don't have to worry about all of this. It's just taken care of. So I'll go ahead and place that order now. And what's going to happen, that is, oops. So this is, um, uh, maybe this is my address. How the shipping rates changed since I I did it. So maybe just we'll refresh. Maybe it's, uh, not sure what what's going on there, but let's try it once more. Emerald. Process that. Hopefully this goes through. If it doesn't, doesn't it doesn't matter too much. Um, but what's happening at this point is this will be processing that payment. There we go. Um, and now that is saved to Snipcart. And if we load the the dashboard, I'm logged into Snipcart here. I can get an overview of my store, how much it's sold, how many subscriptions I have, abandoned carts, etc. And, and I can set up all of the. I guess marketing around my orders as well. If I wanted to follow up with people a week after they re have received their order, I can kind of manage all of that in here. So I can see in here, um, I'll just refresh the page just in case that's an up to date. We have the the order that I've just placed um, for that product that, that is in Snipcart. I've got all of the address information that I've obviously just placed in there. But what's actually happened under the hood is we've now placed an order with this other service um, called Printful. And this is the fulfillment center for all of the products that we, we added to the cart. I click on this and we see here that this address has came through and we have um, the the product here that the person has ordered. We've got what's on the front and the, the mock-up of that. So we can, we can kind of see what all of that is. Um, then I have disabled at the moment for, for demo purposes because I don't want to um, start sending uh, all of these to people who make uh, dummy dummy data because I actually have my card info in Printful. Um, but essentially what happens is once Stripe has been notified, and I'll, I'll open this and I'll go back to this as well so so we're aware of everything that's going on. But we've, we've got a payment here. You can see we had that incomplete one that failed. Then we've got the successful one. What this will do, um, and it's disabled currently, but this then once that payment has been accepted with Stripe, um, sometimes it can take a few seconds. That will trigger a webhook with uh, Snipcart. Uh, sorry, Stripe will trigger a webhook that triggers a webhook to my Next.js application that looks at that income and payload and goes, great, the payment is, is, is successful with Stripe. Now we'll tell Printful to confirm this order. So once we confirm this order, that will tell Printful, you're good to go, payment is accepted you know, ship this order to the, you know, start pro, uh, fulfilling this order and ship it. Now, for those looking at this, you might think, oh, these prices don't match up. Something's wrong. Well, essentially, obviously, Printful gives me products at, uh, at cost price. So what you've seen on the front end uh, of the store um, in, in here, wherever it was, um, these prices won't always match up. You'll see there that's a lot cheaper for me. Um, even after the VAT, uh, these are a lot cheaper for me. So I can obviously add some uh, markup on on the products I'm selling on the on the storefront. And um, you know, once that goes through Printful, they know um, based off all the inventory. Um, there is costs associated with printing things for the first time. So if you've never printed a product, there is obviously a cost associated with that. Um, but once you once they've kind of printed it once, they've got the template, they can process that for you um uh, you know 
as many times as you want afterwards, and there's no fee for that. So the first thing you sell that could be kind of an additional cost, but that's kind of uh, recuperated once you sell more. Um, so that was kind of a good thing for us when we kind of started about using this. This was something we could just send tons of orders to, and it was kind of all automatically um, uh, synced. So that's just kind of a run through of it in action. Obviously, check out Printful if you want to learn more about about that. But they've got they do have integrations with all of these other different services. I just decided, being a developer, I wasn't going to use something that I could just click uh, and, and enable. I wanted to build my own thing. So this is when we landed up with the the headless dropship and starter. Um, but check on out Printful. The, the, there are other um, providers doing this as well uh, with, with APIs, but we found these do have a, a huge. Uh, range of, of products in their inventory um, you know all types of clothing from from you know to kids hats accessories there's, there's so much in there and like I say they're they're pretty eco-friendly as well um, so that's kind of enough of the of, of the demo hopefully that's kind of piqued your interest a little bit if you want to learn more I will switch over to the code now and just kind of walk through some of the things I was talking about just um, because it's interesting and we're, we're talking about the jam stack so i want to kind of show how we can leverage things in Next.js such as api routes to power um all of this as well so let me just switch my theme here um we do have um all of the code that's in here this is all open source um and everything uh, you see on the website uh is obviously here um we've got a few things um obviously with Next.js, we statically build the pages ahead of time um, as you grow your inventory, you might kind of want to do this differently and kind of render it and, and cache it uh, uh, at runtime on demand. But we make kind of a request to the Printful API to get all of the products. We then do some obviously fancy things to to enhance names and, and what have you. Um, but essentially what we get is a, a product grid that you've seen where we can add things to uh, the cart. Um, but the, the more important thing kind of once things get in motion and people start buying from the store is there's a few things going on. So Snipcart doesn't require you to have an inventory, which is really cool. And what that means is when I add an item to the cart, and it's probably worth opening the component to show you this, um, we, we we do something uh, in here to uh, add it to the add item um, to the, the Snipcart card um and we've got kind of a, a button obviously to, to add it to the wish list and whatnot but the button down here to add it to the cart um all this requires you to do is specify and tag with html attributes some things about this so here we've got a snip cart add item um and we've got these other data attributes so with snip cart all they want me to do is pass an id for the product and the price and a description image name and a ton of other stuff as well if you wanted to. They support multi-currencies. Um, but the important thing with Snipcart that is kind of built with security in mind is they want you to pass a endpoint where they can crawl the product when you uh, during the checkout process. So you're probably wondering, um, you know, what if I what if I just uh, adjusted the price that was sent? What if I triggered this in the DOM and sent a price that was much cheaper? Um, well, Snipcart they want this URL so they can crawl at any point during the checkout and at the moment of payment that uh, the price matches what you told it. So the price you give here, that must match what's returned at this endpoint. So if I open the code for that in this API route, and again, this is everything's in the one Next.js application here, and these are just kind of, you can think of them of serverless functions. Um, this take, obviously takes in the request, gets the ID from... The, the the route params here and it does a fetch to printful so I can get the price um, and then from here just returns it in a format that um, printful is expecting so that's going to go okay the price matches you're good to go you can continue to uh, check out so hopefully that's making sense so far um, because that's that's one of the cool things with snipcart is you don't have to migrate data to them. You can just use it with your existing platform. If you're using a headless CMS or something, you can use Snipcart and use the inventory from there. Um, you know, which is which is really nice. As long as you kind of wire all this up, then you know there's nothing really to you know there's nothing to worry about on that front. 
some of the other things, which obviously I showed in the demo and kind of what ties it all together is we've got this folder in the project for Snipcart. So whenever you add an item to the cart and you go through the checkout process and you add in your address or you, you change your phone number in there, we pick some of that out. Um, we do a few things to, to, to see what you've, what, what you've actually added. Um, the front end needs to kind of, uh, you, you know, the, the API of Snipcart and Printful are, are very different. So we kind of got to build and, and kind of do some boring stuff in here. Um, so if you are checking this out later, you know, please excuse what looks like messy code. It's just working with multiple APIs and stitching all this stuff together. You know, you do kind of have to, uh, seen yourself sometimes doing it, but um, we've got a post to Snipcart to say, okay, this is all of the rates. Um, you know, these are the products I want to get rates for. Um, in here, that returns the items, we return it to uh, this endpoint. So Snipcart will call a webhook based on the response, which is what we've got here. They then go, okay, these are the rates for shipping and they update the shipping UI in the checkout, which I showed you. So um, you, you're seeing that we had a flat rate, depending on where you are in the world and what products you've chosen and where they're fulfilled from, you may get like express shipping or next day or something. Um, and that's what this, that's what Snipcart's kind of asking for. They want the, this in this uh, format. So we get that obviously from, from Printful. Printful is the fulfillment center and provides all of that. Very basic, it's, you know, maybe it's 90, 90 lines of code for handling shipping prices. And that kind of handles the two way uh, kind of communication between both of the services, which is cool. Um, you know, typically a lot of people um, that I've spoken to over the years and, and, and myself very early on in the Jamstack, I was just kind of using API endpoints to just send data to. And then we kind of learned a lot more about kind of using them uh, as part of webhooks and triggering other stuff. And this is kind of one of those great examples where we've got two services kind of talking to each other through one endpoint. Um, and I just think that's kind of, uh, it's really cool. We need to kind of try and show more of this um, and, and, and use more of these because frameworks like Next make this really, really simple. We can abstract all of the, the stuff you'd probably need to kind of store on a server and we can just kind of deploy it with the, with the site as well. And if you're deploying this to a staging environment or a preview URL, Everything is contextualized. So the API keys, I have separate API keys for Snipcart in staging and in preview as I do Snipcart, as I do Printful and Stripe. So we're kind of, I'm, I'm able to test all of that out in the in all of those different workflows and scenarios. Um, we do support tax as well. Um, this isn't on by default. Um, if you are tax registered in your country, then obviously you want to turn this on. There is a huge readme in this project in, on GitHub that you can go through. And this kind of shows you how to enable the VAT and the tax side. But again, this works in the same way as the shipping stuff. So a request comes in from Snipcart to this endpoint. This will then make a request to Printful to say, these are my products. What's the VAT prices? Because you know children's prices have uh, low or no VAT, I think. Um, whereas kind of adults, they do. And, and, and depending on what you're buying, the VAT rates change as well. So once you get those rates back, those, those are returned to Snipcart, and then that updates the, the UI during the checkout. And this happens, you know, in, in, in 50 milliseconds or so. The Snipcart handles all of that. They show, obviously, all of the loading states um, and make it a really nice uh, experience. Um, and it, it's kind of all just powered with, with these endpoints. And kind of the final thing here that I wanted to show um, was this was this webhook uh, endpoint. This is essentially one Snipcart has accepted your order. It's successful. It will then hit this endpoint, and we do a bunch of things in in here to um, account for for various things. So, um, most importantly, um, this just once an order is completed, it will um, uh, you you know it will create that order. I handle a few other things. Maybe it's just uh, the customer updated. So if you've logged in and you update your customer profile, I don't really need to do anything. But with Snipcart, it's kind of one endpoint for your webhooks. So you've got to kind of work with it in this way. Um, and then the create order, I'll just jump into. Again, I get all of the data from the order and I pass that on to Printful and I post it. Um, and that is pretty much 
the flow of how it all is connected. So I know I skimmed over all of the code. This is all on GitHub. I didn't want to bore you by going through all of this line by line, um, but you're you know, welcome to check it all out, even deploy it and and, 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 and sell something um, for yourself. So there's, there's a ton more stuff in here. Like I say, um, feel free to check all of that out. And the readme is uh, full of instructions on, on how to use it. Um, but yeah, that is the headless drop ship and starter. Um, I know it was relatively quick. I threw, I flew through that, um, but I thought um, you might like that. So let me know if there's any questions. That was awesome, Jamie. Thanks for uh, presenting to our group and also thanks for open sourcing the project and sharing it with everyone. I think this is a super great way to get started for someone who wants to do drop shipping and um, run their own technology and customize it. So that, that's a really uh, cool project that you shared. Um, I'll open up the floor first for other folks that want to answer or ask any questions. I have a few, um, but does anyone else have questions for Jamie? No, we're all good. Okay. Um, so, uh, so you're using these two different services, um, and I, I thought it was pretty interesting. How you're talking about like one endpoint, end point, um, kind of like updating uh, through through both um, channels. There, um, it, during the the product creation process, I assume you'd kind of start in Printful, and you would you would you know design the T-shirt, for example, and then in Snipcart you would create a product and tie those two together with some kind of idea or how does that, that look from like an admin perspective? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's one thing I didn't show. Um, I do apologize in, in Printful, uh, you start in Printful. So you create your product, you create, you can have as many stores as you want in there and you can add, um, you can add, upload your logo, your assets, you choose the products, you can place the logo on the shirt and in and, and whatever location, choose all of the different variations and colors once that's saved there is nothing more you need to do at that point if you deployed this it would all just work from that point providing you put in all your api keys what happens is the next js page fetches all of the products from printful it then knows what the id is of that product or the variant you've chosen and when you click the add to snipcart it sends that id and product name to snipcart so snipcart there is no inventory. You can sync inventory to it, but there, I you know the whole idea of it is you 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 don't. Um, you would only sync to it to kind of verify the prices. But I I do that through a, uh, an endpoint of Webhook. So once you've got this page, you add it to a cart that 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 code that's executed. The 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 handler on Snipcart sends everything to the cart. So each cart item has an ID and price and stuff. And then when you go through the checkout process, that webhook just sends that ID to Printful. This person's ordered that product. So you create everything in Printful and there's nothing more you need to do from there, which is which is really cool. Hmm. That's great. So Snipcart's really just handling like the the cart and the the, the processing um, of payment, basically. Yeah, I I have Stripe enabled for that. You can enable PayPal, Adyen. Mm -hmm. Um, Square, all of the the, 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 ma the major gateways they support. Um, Snipcart, obviously, you can also set up uh, cart abandonment uh, emails and, and triggers and stuff like that. So I actually have that set up in the demo store. And every few days, there's like one or two emails that come through. This person hasn't checked out or whatever. So you can, you can do all of that and kind of send emails to customers to follow up as well and kind of Snipcart handle uh, all of that. And uh, the handle kind of reordering as well. So if you wanted to return, um, log in to your previous order, you can reorder as well. And that's kind of all just taken care of um, for you, which is cool. That's awesome. And so it's cool that like you can set up these automatic emails with um, Snipcar. I'm curious, like, what is the email functionality like in there? Can you go through and like periodically manually say, okay, all the people who didn't get an order this week, I want to follow up with this specific message. Or is it, does it have like that kind of like email list functionality or is it not really quite like that yeah um i it's, it's been a, a while since i've looked at it but mm -hmm. what you can do is uh you can set up um recovery campaigns i think so you create a recovery campaign and you can say send an email um to orders that have been abandoned over a period of time 
Um, you can even you can create as many of these as you want. So you could create an abandonment abandonment email for orders created uh, an, an hour ago and send them a discount and say, okay, we'll give you five percent off anything that was created uh, that hasn't you know anything that's abandoned more than a day. Maybe send them ten or fifteen percent off, and you can attach these custom discounts that are generated like one time use only. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, and you can customize whether you want to kind of use their template or you kind of want to override their template with your values and, and whatnot, or you can just use your own service, kind of ping that as a, as a as another webhook. So tons of flexibility on that one. Very cool. Um, and then, so everything that you're kind of showing on the front end of your website, is that, um, I mean, because you're pulling in from different services, you're displaying, I assume that's all just client side stuff. Are you, are there any like, fallbacks or server render stuff that you're doing is it all just kind of like a client side processing yeah with because i'm using xjs everything i'm using the newer get stack props which is a lot of uh stack building um and all of that is server rendered so once the page is built it's just it's just at the cdn level so what you get is is the html there's no it obviously with next it rehydrates to a react app so mm -hmm. If you were kind of navigating between pages, it'll pull the JavaScript and execute that accordingly uh, in, in kind of React land. But if you were to kind of refresh the page, you would get the the hard coded HTML, and then React would take over. So um, I I can't remember when I last checked the Lighthouse scores on that on on the demo specifically, but I think when I released it, I wanted it to kind of be be all full. I'm not sure how much weight that carries really in, in real terms, but um, it's it, it kind of ticked all the boxes at the time, um, and and. Yeah, uh, it's all just taken to take most of it's taken care of with Next, <laughs> which, awesome. is, which is a delight. Yeah, so you get like really great SEO and everything right on the, the start. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm in the process of maybe migrating it to something called Remix, um, which is relatively a, a newer framework that came out in public uh, <laughs> general availability this week. That is something which is um, a little different um, to Next. Um, they approach things a little differently. So I'm intrigued to see how I can make this work um, with that. Awesome. Any other last minute questions? Yeah, uh, I thought of one. Um, do you think that uh, having a static um, e-commerce website has an edge over like the shopify experience or like other competitors experience in terms of like user experience and seo or is it just developer experience that's better or that you prefer yeah yeah i think it's both um when i was working in kind of the e-commerce realm a few years ago we were seeing at the time there was a ton of different people moving to gatsby it was kind of the first stack site generator in the modern times of react um you know there was tons before but uh, with the likes of React, we were seeing people generate millions of pages in some cases because they were building pages for you know all different types of variations. That came with a ton of problems for developers. Like that developer experience was great that you could do this, but what we were doing is shifting one problem to to another. So we then had hours of build times um, that just really didn't work. Like if you changed a product, you had to rebuild your entire site, and that is just a horrible developer experience. That's improved now. Um, and one of the one of the things that I do like about Next is you can say, okay, don't generate anything, don't generate anything ahead of time. But if someone requests a page, then build it, show show the show the page, make it a block and request so it's server rendered, but cache it after that. And then that you, you kind of fall into a stale while revalidate. You set when this page will eventually expire. And this I think helps that experience for customers. They get those fast pages. But also on the developer experience, if someone changes the content for that page, then that page, only that page will have to regenerate um, once that kind of cache expires, whatever you've set it to. So the experience is is uh, is, is is better for both um, with with what Next is doing in the stay why revalidate um, loop that they've got going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's tons of, quotes and studies and things that even Amazon have said over the years, you know, um, you know, you know, hundred milliseconds has been like a, a million dollars and lost or whatever the numbers were, you know, uh, you know, whatever the numbers were. So I think it does, it, it does help to be statically generated. You've just got to be 
a little um, cautious on how you go about that. Um, it could kind of be great for the end user, but if you are waiting hours for rebuilds to happen, then probably it's going to rack up server costs and build time costs and what have you. Um, what, you know, but there are kind of things in other frameworks that can kind of get around that um, to make the make the experience better. But I think you know we've certainly seen a lot with. You know, I keep talking about Next.js because they're kind of moving leaps and bounds to bring a lot of the stuff to the edge and make the web faster. So they recently introduced this concept of a, you know, bringing serverless functions to the edge and, and kind of working with this edge computing so they can run middleware at the edge. And I think that helps, again, it's going to ha help the end user. Of if if you're doing an A-B test of some sort, being able to kind of execute which flow they own to within, you know, very, very, very single digit milliseconds. Sometimes um, the customer is obviously going to get a better experience. So I think for e-commerce, e it's it's great if it's executed well. And to your comment about Shopify, their release on Hydrogen um, uh, this year was kind of a, a nod that this is where they want kind of their developers moving towards. And people who, you know, people who are just happy creating, you know, cre creating Shopify stores using the templates they're fine, but you know, once you kind of get to the enterprise level, you look at Shopify Plus or the one hundred thousand other APIs in the e-commerce space. So hopefully that answers your your question. I could talk hours about it. I've spoken to people for hours about it over the years. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, no. Well. Thanks everyone for coming um, and thank you to the speakers. I really appreciate you sharing the knowledge. Uh, I feel like I learned a ton tonight um, and uh, I'm excited to play around with both of your projects. So um, thanks so much. Thank you guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. See ya. We'll see you later. Bye.